How did you wind up in Calgary? Well, I went up there. Uh, we were on a tour in the Middle East in uh, Arab Emirates, and uh, uh, Brett was on there. I knew him from Japan. Uh, Dynamite Kid was on the tour. Uh, Dick Murdoch and myself, we were the four foreigners, and uh, we were with New Japan Pro Wrestling. So uh, Dynamite came and asked me if I'd want to come and work in Calgary. I said, well, I can't go nowhere without New Japan's permission. So I said, Mr. Shima was there. I said, you got to go ask him. So he went and asked Mr. Shima. He says, okay, we'll send Alan up there when he has a break. But he says, one thing, we don't want no messing around with him because we know how you guys are. You gotta, the Calgary had a bad reputation of ribbing people, right? Right. Huh. And so I came up there and I met Stu. And Stu took a liking to me, and that's how I wind up there. I left there. I was living in Australia at the time with my girlfriend, and I, she was driving me crazy. So Stu called me up one day, and he says, hey, you big salty bastard, when are you coming back up? I said, send me a ticket. And that's how I, was. And I wind up meeting my wife, which is another story. <laughs> and then um, that's how I uh, wind up in North Calgary. What are your wife's. memories about Stu Hart? Any good stories? Stu? Yeah, oh, there are many. I love Stu. He was quite the character. He was something else. They threw the mold away when they made that guy. <laughs> he was something. He was he was unbelievable. Do you believe the allegations Dynamite Kid made in uh, I think it was in his book about doing coke and drugs with Brett? Anything that Dynamite said in the book was true. You know, they want to deny it. They want to lie about. It. They all did it, and he wasn't lying. He told the truth about Brett doing it too. Yeah, he told the truth. Huh. Can you talk about the story of Dynamite wanting you to run him over with a car or something? <laughs> <laughs> The guy was crazy. <laughs> we're, everywhere we went, we sold out everywhere. First, uh, when I came back in 1983 from uh, Australia, Stu wanted me to work with Brett again. I worked with him in 82. I said, I know he's your son and everything. I don't want to work with him. I said, the guy is no doing business with him. And like I said, I'm in this for the bank book, not the scrapbook. I said, I'm going to work with somebody that I can make some money. He said, who do you want to work with? I said, Dynamite Kid. He said, Dynamite's a heel. I said, don't worry. When I'm doing him, he'll be a baby face. So now I'm working with him. We're selling out everywhere we're going. I mean, everywhere. Stu is happy. We're all happy. We're making money. So now they wanted to do TV in, in a little town called Red Deer. It's north of uh, Calgary, about 86 miles. And he comes up with me. He says, bad news. I said, yeah. And I know he's going to come up with some crazy nonsense. He says, and I was the, actually legitimately the first wrestler ever suspended by the Wrestling and Boxing Commission working with Dynamite. I actually, they actually suspended me twice. Huh. So he says, okay, we're in Red Deer. There's no commission here. Let's do something really nobody's ever done before. I said, what is that? He says, okay, Davy Boy and I are going to do an interview. You come with your car. I had a big town car at the time. He says, you come and you run me over. And I, said, <laughs> I said, say what? He said, you run me over. He said, Tommy, stay away from the drugs. I said, it's starting to affect your brain. <laughs> what do you mean? That is a great idea. Yeah, but I'm not doing it. I said, you know, I'm on a thin string here. They're actually talking about running me out the country. They actually got on TV and said, I should be kicked out the country. Tired of feathering and just. I said, are you kidding? I'm going to run you over with my car and everybody knows who I am and know it's me. No way am I doing that. <laughs> you crazy. Oh, okay. We'll come up with something else. Uh, he was too much. <laughs> what were your thoughts on Dynamite around this time? You know, I was sorry that a lot of people never got to see him at his best because at that time when he was uh, in the WWF and there working as the Bulldog, he had a lot of serious injuries. So he was on a decline. But if the people could have actually seen him all over the world when he was at his best, they would be in awe, you know, because like I'm in awe of the guy now. I, I put in a tape and watched the best of Dynamite like a couple of months ago and I just stood there and I said, you know, you forget about how somebody is, and I just, I can't believe how good this guy was, you know. Because I still say to this day, pound for pound, he was the best ever, without a doubt. And nobody's come close, maybe Chris, Chris Benoit, that's about it.